From Phoenix, Arizona, home to the brand that's made golf easier for more than 60 years, it's Ping Academy Live 2022. Here's your host, Andrew Rice. Ryan, we cannot have a discussion about Ping equipment without talking about putters. It all started with a putter more than 60 years ago and you continue to bring exciting new models and technologies to golfers. Let's start by talking about putter development. How is it different than designing an iron ore driver? I've heard some say it is more art than science. Is that true in Pink's case? So when we even talk about the original putter in 60 years ago, there was so much science behind that and the engineering principles that led to making a really sound putter and that something that changed and transcended the game. And today we continue that same philosophy at Ping. There are art elements that we look at. We want very pleasing alignment styles. We want shapes that really balance the way that someone looks at a putter and delivers confidence. But when we look at the technologies and, and the research that we uh, really invest in behind uh, the curtain, when we look, work on that, there's ideas of quiet eye. And we look at how do we design uh, technology elements that help players confidently look at certain areas on a putter. Uh, there's technologies around kinetics where we try to understand all the forces that are influencing a putter. And for such a simple stroke, those tiny variations can lead to profound misses. And ultimately, if we can help a player get consistency when they set up to a putter and deliver their stroke, we're going to lead uh, to better scoring on the green. Ping has always offered multiple models within a family to ensure a choice for every golfer. Blades, mid mallets, and mallets. We know putters are a very personal decision but we also know certain models work better for certain stroke types. Explain why it is so important to not only find a putter you like the look of, but one that fits you as well. So having one that the alignment style um, and the way that looks uh, really is pleasing is a great starting point. Uh, but there's so many fitting elements within each model and our family of putters that lead to better performance. And so we have done studies where we looked at alignment styles and, and having ball width styles. We have uh, what we call ceiling styles where it's a high dominant line or uh, floor styles where they're lower or minimal alignment styles. Those can be great starting points, but when we get into the fitting elements of the proper head weights for tempo, when we look at the stroke type and really deliver on for your type of rotation, dialing in the stroke type. And so we have different hang angles to our putters that really dial that in for different types of golfers. The lie, the loft, the length of the putter, once you dial all of those elements in, it really allows you to take a putter out onto the golf course and start to play and perform better. The ultimate validation for a putter design is when it makes it on tour. For the last several years, Ping has been quietly working with tour pros, building super custom, fully machined, one-off designs just for them under the name PLD, which stands for Putting Lab Design. This year, you're introducing the much anticipated PLD milled family. Tell us the influence the tour had in developing it and why Ping is bringing it to golfers now. So PLD milled is a great product line that has been in, in a, the development process for quite some time. We've had a collaboration project between our design team, our tour reps and players to really hone in on how do we design putters that are best for the most elite golfers and allow that performance to lead to wins on tour. And we have been working on this, we've developed models, and specifically we're at the point now where it's time to bring those to the general golfer. There's a lot of precision milled putters on the market. What makes the PLD milled different and so much better? So we can talk about the craftsmanship, we can talk about the machining and, and the really dialing all the quality elements of how you make a high end, beautiful quality putter. Um, but we just have a leg up. Two of the models that we're gonna talk about within PLD Milled are an answer and answer two that we've had decades of work on how do we really dial those in? How do we design them to be best for golfers at the elite level as well as the average and high handicap? Um, and really it's been an opportunity for us to now do these high end, elegant, beautifully machined putters and bring those to market. In a few minutes, we're going to take a look inside the Ping Putting Lab, one of my favorite places and where much of the inspiration for these designs come from. Before that, take us through each model and the design attributes of each. There are four tour proven models, each worthy of the PLD name. The Answer, Answer 2, DS72, and Primetime 4. The first one we'll talk about is the Answer. 
And it's, you know, it's our mainstay design. And all of the elements within this have gone from what we originally developed to now working on those with tour players and now bringing to market. It's offered in our stealth finish, so it's a black finish. It's a slide arc putter. It has our deep amp milling texture on the face, so it's our aggressive milling uh, profile. And it, it features a number of key characteristics to the head design that really made it elevate for tour players and we think are gonna be great options for uh, golfers when they pick these up. And in particular, we've made the top rail slightly thicker. It's a little bit wider, but we've also rounded the top rail characteristics so that it's a little bit softer um, when you look down in the visual. It's made the top rail to the first and second ballast have better proportions and feel more balanced. In addition to that, it features our tri-sole design, so it helps at different lie angles when you set up and on different conditions that it really holds its position and sits square. And then overall, this answer within PLD Milt is just a little bit smaller um, than some of the answers that we've done in previous machine lines. It's just an elegant and beautiful putter that's packed with technology to really help you putt better. When we get to answer two, answer two is that longer, slimmer profile design. Uh, it also features an alignment line, which is not on the answer. That answer is the minimalist style alignment. Answer two has the ball width cavity with the alignment style. And as I mentioned, it's a little bit longer heel toe, squattier. It, it's a little bit shallow, shallower at front, front to back. But it also features that same rounding of the top rail, a little bit broader top rail thickness, and the trisole design. It's offered in our satin raw finish. Um, so we have the stealth and answer. The satin raw is a little bit brighter, higher luster finish. Um, and really makes it stand out between an answer and answer two offering. DS72 was really working with Tour and it was developed with Victor Hovland in mind. It's a mid mallet offering. It has softer ballast, a very strong ball width element and a strong center alignment line, very broad top rail thickness and all of the milling lines really help either being a parallel or perpendicular to the alignment style. So it really helps with that squaring aspect when you set it down at a dress. It's offered in the satin raw as well, so it's that shinier finish. Um, really great putter, and it um, fits into our straight category in terms of having a double bend. And then the last one is the Primetime 4. It's in a stealth finish. It has very strong ball width characteristics and really is starting to transition to um, a smaller mallet style. The Primetime 4 is a very low profile tine version. Um, and when we worked with our tour players in particular, they really liked the characteristics of the tine sections, the ball width, but wanted to see something that was a little bit smaller and lower profile, um, which we were able to deliver in our all steel machine version. All four putters are 303 stainless steel. The Tyne 4 features a 6061 aluminum hosel, so it is a two-piece component design, um, but it's just a great smaller mallet design. Um, and, and across the line, all four models are just tour proven and ready to bring to market. Ryan, those look amazing and I'm glad you have a model to fit every stroke type. You guys really don't miss a thing. Excellent work. Now, let's learn more about what goes on inside Ping Putting Lab. We're here in the Ping Putting Lab, located inside the Ping Proving Grounds at Ping HQ in Phoenix, Arizona. It's here our master fitters work with top players from around the world, professional and amateurs, to dial in and custom build their putters so they can compete at the highest levels. It's also where Ping researchers study the art and science of putting, conducting experiments and testing their latest theories using the most advanced tools available. We asked Dr. Eric Hendrickson, Ping's director of golf science, to give us a deep dive into what Ping is doing to make putting easier. There's a lot more to it than you might think. We do a lot of what we call golf science research, so trying to gain fundamental understandings of how things work. And our designers are now trying to leverage that insight and apply that to designs. So they take maybe all these different variables and these different insights we get in the golf science world from the fundamental research and try to combine them into optimal combinations for different players. So we have meetings multiple times a week with our design engineers discussing the fundamentals of the physics of putting, the elements of you know, human psychology that come into that, and feed those insights to the design team so they can create embodiments that leverage that understanding and ultimately go into the designs that you see in the market. I'm sitting on a 70-ton piece of granite right now. Um, and so I wasn't here when it was installed, but apparently it was quite the feat getting this in here and, and set up. It's flat to 10 thousandths of an inch from end to end. It's about 45 feet long. On top of that granite, we have a true line putting surface that helps us get good rolling characteristics and something that represents a real putting green. And so that allows us to have a very precise 
role and reaction when we execute a putt. And then we can then couple that with testing we do on the outside putting green at the proving grounds and marry those two behaviors to ultimately arrive at putting designs that help people putt their best. So we have a number of cameras that we use to analyze what the player does, uh, what happens at impact, and then what the ball does after impact. So we have cameras that line the table and can track the ball down the length of the table, which helps us understand how what happens at impact influences what the ball is doing. They have different frame rates, so we can operate and isolate the 500 microseconds of impact and actually look at various frames over that impact interval at really high speeds. So those cameras play a big role in, in fitting, so we can kind of understand how different players are um, adjusting to the putters that we're putting in their hands, but then they're key for research. Um, so when we're trying to dive into one little small variable that we change, we need to use those cameras to understand uh, and, and measure what happened when we changed those variables um, with the putter design. We have the putting robot to take the player out of the equation when we're zeroing in on just the equipment and impact. We're able to execute putting strokes, different types of putting strokes, so we can make adjustments to that putting robot to have maybe a certain amount of face rotation or a certain length of putt. And it's really useful in trying to take the player out of things and people are messy. <laughs> and so when doing some of this testing, it's really helpful to take them out of the equation, understand how certain mass properties and maybe face treatments influence performance. And so the putting robot is really useful for that type of research. With player testing, a lot of times we're trying to kind of look at how putter design is influencing what the player does. At one level, a player's putting stroke is kind of like their signature. It, it doesn't change a whole lot at a macro level, but there's certain design elements that can change it, make micro changes to what they do and ultimately influence performance. So a lot of times during player testing, we're trying to kind of understand how those different design elements might be influencing what the player does. And then ultimately proving out performance, right? Nobody's a robot. And so ultimately, if we're trying to verify or validate that a certain design is helping somebody putt better, uh, we need to have players do it um, and measure what happens when we put that design in a player's hands. We learn a lot working with the best putters in the world as to what are the different elements and how are they influencing the performance of the best players in the world. And then we can then take that information and then apply it to everybody. They serve as a great baseline for us to make conclusions, conduct research, and gain some insights into how putter design can influence performance. One of the more fun projects and technologies that, we, that we've used is eye tracking. So that's where we actually put a device, kind of like glasses, um, and we can actually see where a player is focused, both prior to making a putting stroke and then during the putting stroke. And so it gives us insight into how different alignment aids might influence where a player looks and what they're focused on. We've seen players go from one alignment aid to another and seen their gaze pattern tighten up. So they're able to focus more on the ball or their point of focus based on the alignment aid, whereas the other alignment aid might be very scattered. Um, and a player you know, has a difficult difficulty you know, focusing um, on either the putter or the ball or even a spot in front of the ball. And then it's actually been applied in other areas of sport as well. So players shooting free throws understanding what they focus on while shooting a free throw. And so seeing all that, it was like, wow, there's a great application to putting and trying to understand for us how the shape and the alignment aids and the overall look of a putter can influence how a player um, can perform in terms of what they're focusing on when they're making a putt. I think Karsten would be extremely jealous of the technology that we have right now and the measurements that we're able to take. He was brilliant in his conceptual understanding of how things worked, and he was always trying to leverage that understanding. And now with the technology we have, we've validated a lot of his philosophies with objective measurements that he was never able to in, in his day. And so it's a lot of fun with all the history that we have connecting the dots with, you know, years and years and years and generations of research um, with new technology and, and yeah, having those moments.